Okay, um, just, uh, Barry said a very brief uh, pre-lunch uh, talk, uh, just to introduce the Institute of Food Science and Innovation, which has been uh, established within the university here pretty recently. Um, just a little bit of background on the University of Chester. Um, it's been around for some time, this uh, is in fact our 175th year uh, as an organisation. Uh, it was established by the Church of England, so there is a sort of a church background to this institute. Um, it is technically uh, one of the oldest higher UK higher education institutes. It, did, it started off um, training priests and then went on to teacher training. So most uh, teachers in this part of the world uh, trace their origins back uh, to this uh, institute. Um, it was until 2005 College of the University of Liverpool, uh, at which time it then achieved university status and its own degree awarding powers. And really the last sort of eight, nine, ten years have been a period of uh, rather dramatic change. Uh, it's gone from about 4,500 students to, well, actually it's more than 17,000 students, that's near 18 and a half. Uh, student population has grown by about 8 to 10 percent per year for the last four or five years. Um, and we are very lucky in that respect, and it's, we're clearly a very uh, popular destination. Um, for many, many reasons. Um, in terms of the university and its delivery of sort of food and nutrition sciences, um, this uh, sort of delivery of these sorts of uh, trainees across several academic departments at the present time. Uh, so within biological <coughs> sciences, clinical science and nutrition, sport and exercise science, sport and community engagement, we find different activities taking place. Um, what we wanted to do was try and pull some of this together, and so hence the formation of an institute which would uh, sort of encourage working across departments, but also to an extent across faculties as well, because we now have uh, a growing engineering uh, uh, institute or engineering faculty as well, which we intend to work with. So the institute has been established to try and coordinate some of these activities, but also to try and drive things further forward as well. Um, as a university, we're quite lucky in terms of who we have as partners as well. Our training is delivered not just in this uh, 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 university, on this site, but also we have a close partnership with Reese Heath uh, College. We have a food centre. Uh, they're a European Centre of Dairy Excellence and they have some very good pilot scale equipment on which to train people. Um, so we have our training delivered down at Reese Heath, also on this site, and we have some programmes under development which have a mix of the two locations as well, so that students can get a mix of, uh, sort, of uh, sort of large scale industrial exposure, equipment exposure, and then on to some more sort of R&D focused uh, activities as well. So what's the, what are the aims of our institute? Well, as I said, it's really to try and drive things further forward. And, and this university's view is that it wants to be very much more industry focused. Um, as a university, we're fairly new, we're quite small. Um, we're in a region where there's a lot of other large universities with an extremely good research uh, <coughs> background. Uh, our kind of opinion is that we're not going to compete as a very research intensive university. We see industry as our way forward in terms of external funding research collaboration. We also have a mission to become a centre of excellence in the food area uh, and in fact this building is funded uh, through European funding and it's also supported by the Local Enterprise Partnership and what was also formed of the Regional Development Agency to pursue that ambition. Uh, some of the previous work that we've done and identified in the northwest of England there was a sort of a range of expertise in the food area across uh, several different universities uh, but it wasn't particularly uh, well sort of joined up. And um, it was felt that something kind of coordinated and integrated was needed, and hence this facility. The university, uh, going back to its sort of uh, church origins, has a sort of a mission of service to the community. Uh, so again, it's considered uh, that uh, assisting uh, local industry to, to grow and, and to develop economic uh, sort of performance uh, is consistent with the university's mission. So, Within the Institute, uh, this now food centre is a key component, but we have plans to uh, develop some additional centres. Uh, one is, uh, one's been mentioned already this morning by uh, Mert, uh, which is a centre of specialised diets. Uh, but we're also very interested in uh, going down the route of uh, novel foods and ingredients, and so again, a, a centre for novel food research is, is being established as well. We see that they will be sort of interacting with each other as well. So, sort of reflecting the university's mission uh, and also in terms of our sort of general view of 
how to go forwards. Really, this institute and this building as a key component, we see as providing an opportunity to engage with industry, uh, really for the purposes of knowledge transfer and exchange. As you might have noticed, this building isn't designed for students as such. Uh, we don't uh, and we can't uh, deliver teaching as such in this building. Um, we see this place as a sort of a, a place where we can bring industry in, we can interact with them, uh, hopefully on a faster time scale than, than North universities normally do. Um, and so we have um, some of the uh, ways in which this sensor is operating are quite different from the rest of the university to try and make us uh, more responsive. So what sort of things are, are going on at the moment? Um, we have an interest in aspects of nanotechnology for food safety, quality and integrity. And we've had some work running for a few years now around atom developments and the applications of those molecules for uh, uh, assays, for biosensor development and potentially also applications into uh, smart packaging. Um, Mike mentioned earlier about sort of um, novel technologies or new technologies and their impacts and we've been working with CETA um, using their batch owning heater to look into uh, some of the impacts on food components and this is just a little bit of data from a placement student we had recently looking at levels of uh, total polyphenols in, in broccoli uh, not just uh, in comparison to conventional uh, cooking but also what happens when they're subjected to an in vitro digestion model as well. Uh, and this is quite an interesting uh, approach. Quite, we think it's quite interesting not just to cook things, but also potentially to see what that does to their potential with bioaccessibility and then bioavailability as well. Uh, and interestingly, there's, there's very little difference, as uh, this data would suggest, between the sort of conventional and open processing of food, which I suppose is quite good. We're certainly not losing uh, unnecessarily those uh, uh, sort of key biofunction ingredients or components. Uh, the sort of activities that we're, we're kind of looking at at the moment or involved in, uh, getting value from waste uh, or co-products, trying to extract uh, functional ingredients and bioactives. Uh, we're also interested in other areas around sort of consumer perception uh, and, and of new technologies and, and so on. And again, just to kind of wrap up before lunch, uh, we are involved in establishing really a regional sort of cluster around this facility as a result of our interaction not just with industry but also uh, other organisations with an interest in sort of uh, economic growth. We've established a range of networks with artists and producers, with larger industries and so on. What we, what we want to do is expand, we want to work at a more international level as well. Again, this university being quite new, uh, so this game is uh, obviously needs to progress this. And one thing we are trying to do at the moment is establish now a European uh, network of clusters. So we have a project uh, starting which is around the creation of a uh, network which we're calling Future Food Network for Europe uh, and this will be to link up similar regions across Europe again to exchange business, to exchange best practice, to exchange staff, students uh, and also to try and uh, encourage innovation and economic growth. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks,